Welcome back now to our next um, conversation. Nigeria has witnessed uh, a shift in its uh, pension system in about two decades with the introduction of a contributory pension scheme. As people search for financial security and stability, let's um, gauge the performance and what to expect as inflation, currency devaluation, and other macroeconomic issues um, weigh on this um, industry. Joining me now is Abim Bola Sulaiman, Executive Director, Investments, ARM Pensions. Um, join us right here in the studio. Great to have you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. So, uh, quite interesting times, um, you know, looking at you know, the macro uh, um, things and issues that we're going through right now from inflation, we're seeing what's happening, you know, in our FX market, you know, everyone is uh, squeezed, mm. you know, right now. Yeah. And you still have to make your, you know, contributions yeah. at this time. Definitely yeah. not an easy time for right. everyone. But how are you seeing, yeah. you know, the, the industry yeah. at this time? Right. I mean, I think one of the things that I always try to emphasize when we have conversation about pensions is it's a long game. It's a very long journey. Um, the contributory pension scheme, it's going to be 20 years um, next year, the enactment of the law. You know, we started in 2004. So yes, the current macro, uh, macroeconomic story is very challenging, and it's been for a while. But if you look at it in the context of the pension scheme, we're coming from 2004. So obviously, in the economy, in the market, you will have dips and troughs. Uh, markets always come in cycles and it's important to highlight this of all the indices that you mentioned inflation is the one that should be most concerning to pension savers because at the end of the day the whole point of the pension scheme is to preserve your purchasing power and your lifestyle when you retire so inflation eating at the real purchasing value of money is a big concern and how do you overcome that I mean it's a global issue we have our own unique problems in Nigeria but inflationary pre pressures are accelerating globally. So one of the ways um, to do this, obviously, is to have an, uh, an investment strategy that protects the funds from inflation. But beyond that is for savers to take their pensions to heart and to think about how much do I need to be contributing to ensure that I can preserve a certain income level or a certain lifestyle at the point of retirement. So the 18% that the law states that you should contribute is a bare minimum. And some of us might be in a position to do more and should consider saving more so that you have you know, enough to live with at the point when you retire. On the investment side, we're trying to be very creative within the confines of the law and the regulation to put investments in asset classes that can protect purchasing power. So we're talking about alternatives like infrastructure, like real estate, like equity type structures where the return on the investment can keep up and hopefully outpace inflation. Yeah, because I remember a story, you know, uh, sometime in Germany, you know, back in the days, you know, after a, a, a group of people were able to pay their pensions, yeah. at the end of the day, when it was time, yeah. they could only afford a cup of coffee you know, with their pension because of inflation, and inflation is a big enemy at this yeah. point. But when choosing a pension fund, you know, administrator, what should I look out for? So you want to look out for a reputable partner, you know, with the question I ask people, and I say with tongue in cheek, I say, who's helping you? You know, when you think about your health, your physical health, um, you know, how you, maybe you want to write your will, a lot of these things you're going to experts, right, and getting expert advice. The same thing with your financial health and your financial security. You want to find a partner that is on the same page with you, that is offering you more than the bare minimum. So the, question, the point you raised right now around, you know, people in Germany losing purchasing power, you want to go to a PFA, for instance, that will offer you retirement and life style planning services. These are add-on services that we provide at ARM Pensions, for instance, for us to think about, can we plot out a lifestyle map for you? Um, what do you need to be doing now, for instance, to have, you know, what's your goal? Let's start from there. And how do we help you, you know, achieve that goal? So you're also looking for a partner with, you know, reputation, longevity. Many of us in Nigeria, we say we're really young. The demographics are great. Half of the contributors are under 40. So this conversation you're having, you're having them for 20, 30 years from now. So you want a partner that will stand the test of time, not just be around. I'm not suggesting that we have operators that won't last, but 
you know, it's the credibility and the focus, the service delivery that should stand the test of time, not just the fact that, that my PFA is around 20, 30 years from now, but can they live up to all those promises years from now? You want a healthy balance between risk and return, and you want to have a long-term focus. You know, if I give you an analogy, if you're trying to do a road trip, you're going from here to Sokoto, for instance, you're not going to make the decision about who's going to get you there fastest and safest by someone who overtook you on Third Mainland Bridge, right? It's a long journey. It's not really about what happened in the last month. You want to think about who's going to get me there safely with the least amount of risk and with the right sets of, you know, outcomes as planned, you know. So um, the pension scheme is very highly regulated. There are only about 21 operators, all reputable. But within that, you want to think about whose goals and whose, uh, which of the operators brand and ethos really align best with you. Um, you. I mean, I don't mean to go on and on, but you do understand what I'm saying. Right. It's a healthy balance, really, between risk, service delivery, and investment returns. Big, big, big balance, um, mm -hmm. definitely. But there's also that issue of um, additional voluntary you know, contributions. Yeah. Should the contributors be worried about this? No, 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 it's not an issue of worry at all. And we alluded to that in the earlier conversation. Additional voluntary contributions are contributions that you make over and above what the regulation mandates you to do. So the law says that you must contribute 18% of your annual income. 8% of that contribution comes from you, 10% comes from your employer. Additional voluntary contributions are contributions that you choose to make above that 18% minimum. And the more you contribute, obviously, the more you have later in life. Uh, the good thing about additional contributions is that you can have intermediate access to it. So it's just another tax efficient saving vehicle. If you contribute more than is required by law, you have access to you know, withdraw some of that money over a five-year time frame. You don't have to wait till retirement. Of course, it's best that you wait till retirement because you want to ensure that in retirement, you are living comfortably. And the more you put away, the better off you're going to be in the long run. So I would encourage all of us to look into, and the beauty of additional voluntary contributions is that you make those contributions tax-free. So you make them from your income before it is taxed. So it's a very tax-efficient way of saving unlike if you decide to kind of save on the side after you've paid taxes. Right, and, and talking about, you know, choosing um, the PFA, you know, ever since the opening of that transfer, you know, window, there's been a focus on, you know, pension, you know, performance at this time. You see people you know, in and out of, you know, PFA. Is, is that the best way to, to go about it? It really isn't the best way to do it. Um, the, the transfer window is open for a reason. You should have choice for who provides such a critical service for you. However, you should make those decisions based on really long-term factors. Um, Just because the window is open doesn't, doesn't mean... mean you have to transfer. And if you want to transfer, please don't transfer because of what happened in May. You know, well, this is a decision you're making for 20 years. You want to look at a long-term track record. You want to look at longevity. You want to look at service delivery. And you want to give your pension fund manager time to deliver on their promise. It really is not a decision to take based on one month of data, three months of data. Um, this is a 40-year journey. You want to be convinced and you want to look at data that truly does predict what will happen in the long run. No emotions. No emotions. And what happens in one month is not a good predictor of what will happen in 30 years. So you want to make sure that you are making it an educated and well thought out decision. What are the uh, major areas you know, uh, people look for adjustments in you know, when they're making these um, transfers? How, how do you mean? Like the, the like how are now, people the, making those the, decisions today? Once the window is open, mm -hmm. what yeah. are those key concerns? Yeah. You know, most of these contributors bring up. You know, right. when they're moving. Um, so um, a lot of times people talk about service delivery. You know, do, am I getting the level of response and interaction and engagement from my provider? Um, people talk about investment performance. In the context of investment performance, they tend to be very focused on the short term, and we're out there really preaching this message that please focus on the long term. It is 
a legitimate concern if you think that the long-term track record is not meeting your needs, but don't do it based on short-term data. Um, sometimes people are doing it for personal reasons, you know, brand alignment, you know, my brother works at that PFA and I want to go there. And that's not the way to make the decision, but I do understand, you know, sometimes um, you've got, I, I think those are the most common really. It's really service delivery. A lot of times we hear about that and we also hear about investment performance. In the past, we heard about inducements, um, but there's a recent regulation from the National Pension Commission that has really brought that, you know, to the back burner. Uh, pension funds are not allowed to offer inducements to customers to move. No, no, anymore. no, buy one, get one free. No, I'll give you access to one other product if right. you move your pension to me and things like that. You know, we're, the operators are not allowed to do that anymore. And so we've seen that being a trigger for moving, starting to go to the back burner. Incredible. So, um, can a one man business have a retirement, you know, savings account? Absolutely. So recently, I believe it's just a couple of years old now, um, the micro pension scheme was launched. Remember, the contributory pension scheme was really designed for structured organizations, registered companies with three or more employees. But recently, there is regulation that allows self-employed, informal sector workers, one-man businesses to open retirement savings accounts for themselves with pension fund administrators. In that situation, you don't need to go through the typical sort of payroll deduction. You make your contributions willingly. Um, for ARM pensions, if you download the app ARM Engage, you know, you'll get the prompters for how to open a pension account very quickly and very seamlessly. ARM Engage. ARM Engage is the app. It's available on Google Store and on the Apple iOS, iOS as well. All right, so um, how can the audience um, reach ARM, you know, at this time if they want to, you know, make uh, inquiries? So ARM Engage is the fastest one. Everyone is on a smartphone today, so download the app. But of course, ARMPension.com is the website. We've got the branch in every state of the Federation, all 36 states and at the FCT. So if you prefer to deal in person, find the nearest branch to you on our website and visit. You can call ARM. It's 0700 call ARM. And we're just, you know, one phone call away. Um, so I, I think that through the offices, the website, the app, the phone, one of these methods There's no will, way, uh, uh, <laughs> will be convenient uh, uh, for you to reach out. A customer will say we cannot reach ARM. No, There's not no, at all. You have every um, <laughs> platform available. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. It was great having this conversation with you. Bimbola Soaiman, mm -hmm. uh, she's the Executive Director, Investment, ARM Pensions. It was great having your Thank perspective today. Thank you so much. Today. Thank you.